Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's that familiar jangle. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Spill Your Guts podcast with Mandy and Rachel. We're here to uh, tell a- another tale. We- <laughs> dream another dream. <laughs> Die another day. <laughs> What's up, home girl? Well, you know, last week we talked about spring is here. Our depression has been lifted. <laughs> Yeah, that lasted for about five minutes. I don't know about you, oh, but it's literally snowing right now in Reno, and I couldn't be more furious. It only lasted the length of the podcast. <laughs> we were right back to it. It lasted long enough for us to be pumped to bring you the good news, and then went <laughs> right back into it. So, yep. screw you, groundhog. <laughs> Speaking of groundhogs and nature, listen, <laughs> what we didn't get to last week... That is at the top of my priority list today is how the F are those birds in that bird feeder, girl? It is honestly the highlight of my day sometimes. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I saw a TikTok where this lady, and I almost sent it to you. I don't know why I didn't. But I saw this video where this lady got one of those bird feeders that you have. And she's like, yeah, wasn't expecting this. It's like a whole slew of rodents. They keep going in there, eating up all the bird seed. Well, I learned I had the same fear because I saw a video of this of one of these ones that sticks to the window and squirrels like launching themselves onto <laughs> it and then it crashing and breaking on the ground. But I didn't know. Fun fact about uh, Utah. Apparently we have like only ground squirrels here. So they're not climbers. They're not coming up here. OK, so they're not wild, rebellious squirrels. No, they just look up. You know what I do sometimes? I just kind of like sprinkle a little food on the ground. You know, there's oh. little things down there that need it too. <laughs> okay, but you didn't hear it from us, Rachel's HOA. <laughs> yeah, honestly, that's why I'm like, hurry up and everything bloom outside this window so no one can see what's going on up here because the You're gonna- tree <laughs> outside my window has become like wild bird porn. <laughs> Wait, what? Bird porn. <laughs> it's like all these finches coming to mate in the tree and then have a little feast and then fly away together. Damn. Cue that Barry White. <laughs> Damn it, Jesse. You need a new, That's new moon. sound effect. <laughs> that was new moon uh, sound effects right there. Dude, I did see, though, if you do have. Hey, hey, I'm here for support. Okay, and random information. So if you do find yourself with a rodent problem in your bird feeder, the lady did suggest to sprinkle some cayenne pepper upon the seeds. <laughs> Not the crickets, Jesse. <laughs> this is serious. <laughs> this is what 40 year olds are interested. Yeah, what the hell? This is very important. Because allegedly, the rodents do not like the hot and fiery cayenne pepper, but the birds don't mind. Now, I don't know. Don't take me to the bank on that because I, as you know, am not an expert. (laughs) What's a bird, like a bird scientist? A bird watcher? Like a, like a, it's like a something is. I can't remember. (laughs) A birdist, a bird enthusiast. I don't know. I'm a professional. I will say this, though. I didn't know there were so many colored finches in the world. It's like a rainbow rainbow bird out here every day. Oh, my day. gosh. Yellow, orange, red. There's a purple. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> there's about to be a whole lot more of them. Do you just want me to record myself singing that so you can use that as your sexy Barry White? Sound effects? I can definitely pull it from this episode. I feel like it was really good. That's an added charge. (laughs) All right. Well, listen, I don't want to get you all fired up. I know that you're calm, you're serene, you're thinking about your bird born. But uh, I have something I want to spill our guts about today. Something very important and near and dear to our hearts. People Mm -hmm. laugh at us, but we can't be all alone because 150 million Americans are right on board with us. And I want to talk about... The up-and-coming TikTok ban. 
Mm -hmm. Are we are we willing to go there? Yeah, we have to because I just like popped off by myself on Saturday night because I didn't have anything better to do <laughs> to understand like what lobbyists are, mm -hmm. who they are, what they do, and why they're fucking everything up for everybody else. <laughs> well, I think it's interesting, too, because we talked last week about, um, well, we always talk about a lot of things. We get pretty wild up in here, but we had talked about the whole concept of like being the change you want to see in the world mm -hmm. and how that's like actually... Uh, more of an inside job, right? And it's kind of like the whole purpose and meat of like the spiritual journey, right? Is going inward mm -hmm. so that you can see those changes reflect like outwardly, right? Yeah. And I thought it's so interesting some of the things I've been seeing in this past week about how TikTok, which is like something that I know you and I, we've joked about like, we love TikTok. We've, na <laughs> we've made no excuses about it around here. Mm -hmm. But, like, out in the world, I have to say things like, oh, this article I read. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, I do the same thing. Right? Like, I don't want people to be like, damn, dude, all she does is watch TikToks. But you know what? I am finding comfort knowing that it's not just me and you. Yes. And, and actually, what an impact TikTok mm -hmm. has made. And actually didn't realize because I, you know, the algorithm of TikTok is very um, personal and it is, um, and we talked a little bit about this last time about how you actually raw dog your TikTok algorithm. You don't offer <laughs> any likes or like she doesn't interact with her page at all so that she can just kind of receive whatever comes at her, which I think is wild. Mm -hmm. I quite oppositely if I do not like the sound of someone's voice will be like mm, not interested <laughs> show less show less of this I'm like hi I would like to make the most exquisite echo chamber that I've ever <laughs> lived in <laughs> I mean I try to be balanced but you know what it's my safe place so no I just yeah. right so so I have been a little bit cocooned uh, with what I see, because everything I'm seeing is just really stuff that like I want to see. Right? right. So in this past couple of weeks, particularly the past week, as you know, there was the congressional hearings and, and all of that. Um, I've seen so many more content creators talking about this and like really putting a spotlight on how TikTok has been like this very important piece of our culture, especially post pandemic. That has brought people together. And I'm telling you, like across political canyons, racial canyons, um, gender canyons, like TikTok has been able to affect a change and influence that we have hoped and prayed celebrities would make, our elected officials would make, our leadership, like all the faith we've had in the people who've been quote unquote in charge have not been able to do what we the people have done for each other on TikTok. And that's why I want to talk about it. When I came in to the conversation, I, I kind of didn't, I didn't really even know about it until I started seeing it and realizing how embarrassing <laughs> Our government is and how they have no idea how yeah. anything works <laughs> yeah what's wi-fi they've ever even <laughs> been on tiktok mm -hmm. so like that was just embarrassing it was hard to watch because the ceo was so mm -hmm. calm collected like i always think when especially when we're watching people debate or argue or whatever like it's always the ones that are able to that aren't like yelling and screaming and cutting people off that I, that I listen to because mm -hmm. I want to stay calm in my nervous system so right. I can take in information. And if someone's screaming at me, like I can't, I can't hear it. Yeah. I don't care what you're saying. Like I'm just hearing the loud and like, it's not, it's not happening. But I came in because I have kind of a, I'm connected to kind of a whole military and veteran community. Right thinking that maybe it should be based on some of the stuff that they've shared about privacy, about um, even things like how it's impacting the Ukraine and Russia war, like being able to locate people like there, there is a security element to it. Now, my thought is I was like, but if you're an enlisted person and you signed a government contract, can't the government go back and be like, you cannot have a TikTok account. Mm -hmm. You cannot be on social media and post your location. Like, isn't that so I don't know. So I started thinking about like 
Okay, I can see that, but this is kind of weird because this went into my lobbyist. Yes, thing. no, take us, spill your guts, <laughs> RDP. Take us down your rabbit hole. Because oh, okay. here's, well, before, and before yeah. you do, I'll just say it's, it's, I, it's kind of random because it's not usually what we talk about, right? Like, we're really not, like, we try, we get real passionate about it in our, like, friendship, but, like, you know, yeah. we try to keep our platform, like, a safe place that's not going to trigger people for us mm-hmm. to, like, talk about these, like, super kind of intimate, like, deeper, deeper things. Right. And so not not like intentionally trying to be avoidant of like current topic or current events or um, triggery topics. Right. But it's important because TikTok has and the culture around it. Right. There has been this energy around it that has brought people together and and has been a tool of so many people going inward to kind of for the first time in their lives seek out mental health help Mm -hmm. and spirituality like start to question things and find answers and learn from other people of other cultures and other demographics and it's just really become and I've been saying it for a long time like when I had to defend myself like from the haters two years ago when I first got (laughs) a TikTok and people like oh you're on that dance nap and there's still people like apparently all of our Congress people are still yeah. the ones that are like, <laughs> look at the demographic, <laughs> right. Mandy. <laughs> well, uh, I know I'm trying, I'm trying to be generous, people. but my favorite is how they're like, well, every time I open TikTok, I just see big breasted women. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's based on what you're searching, sir. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. Uh, you know, it kind of had to defend myself like about TikTok a couple years ago when I started realizing like I prefer like if I have downtime, I prefer to watch this because it really does give power back to the people. Like I really thought it was kind of cool how we started to decide who the hell was funny. Yeah. Like we are no longer just like consuming who like Hollywood is telling us is funny or a comedian. Right. But now we have these creators who, who have emerged who are fucking hilarious dude Mm -hmm. right and we're just like choosing that over everything else and so that's what i like you know began sort of my defensive tiktok about two years ago when i was like hey listen we're all depressed we just came out of quarantine the world is burning let us have a tick and a talk you know we just (laughs) we just i just want to laugh about dumb stuff and i i don't want to talk about the kardashians like celebrities aren't welcome here Mm -hmm. we're all deciding what's cool we're all deciding what's funny leave us alone Mm -hmm. you know but now i'm realizing it's so much more so much more so please take us down your rabbit hole spill your guts (laughs) let's talk about why it's important it was and it was kind of connecting the dot to some other things that happened this week that also kind of reignited or like raised my anger level. And so I had to like, anytime that happens, I try to think back to like 2020 when I was raging Mm -hmm. and like, how can I be more informed? How can I take action? How can I be connected to groups and communities while staying calm? Right. Like like that CEO, right. Like, so I can deliver a, a message that people can hear and receive. So I started, um, you know, between like book bans, banning drag shows, school shootings, gun control, all this stuff. I started like thinking about how our government is lost. I don't know if that's the right word, but that's what it feels like. And um, a big impact is that until we make it illegal for lobbyists at all levels, right? So state, local and federal, to fund Congress to co-write bills and laws. Okay. Oh my gosh. So for for somebody who might be out there, you know, like myself, who might not know, maybe have like a vague idea, could you explain like to a common person like myself, what is a lobbyist? Because we hear that word a lot, but maybe some people don't know. They're private interest groups, but some of the top lobbyists in the country are... Amazon, Mm -hmm. Pfizer, Meta, which is also Facebook and Instagram, Mm -hmm. which when I saw that on the list, I was like, ah, Mm -hmm. there it is. Mm -hmm. Like, that's 
where this is coming from, mm -hmm. right? And it's just so wild to me. Like, so they fund their cause and give money to people on Congress um, to to back the bills that they want to make into laws. And it's so wild to me. Like, here's what I can. And that's legal that they're just like yeah. able to accept money and gifts. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's Millions. not a conflict of interest. Interesting. Yes. Millions okay. of dollars mm -hmm. are in exchange here. And on both sides, all political parties do this. <clears throat> there's a very few, there's a handful that don't. And I, what I can't like wrap my head around, and I don't know when it's, when it actually started, but like, why is money involved at all in passing or changing a law? <laughs> like, when did that happen? It shouldn't even be in the equation. Mm -hmm. If it's something that's going to benefit Americans, there should be no money as part of the equation. Mm -hmm. But here we are, and it is. I mean, in any other like institution, you can't you can't do yeah. that. It's unethical, right? So we have Facebook essentially funding how they want free speech to look. We have Pfizer funding how they want healthcare to look, mm -hmm. and. And that's your trickle down, <laughs> your trickle down theory. And Listen, so what you're saying is all my Katniss Everdeen speeches have not gone on deaf ears. Mandy was right all along. <laughs> Finally. But after all these years, like it's really impacting the average American, even when, but even when there was another school shooting mm -hmm. right on the, and then we all get up in arms mm -hmm. and everyone starts yelling and nothing changes mm -hmm. because a lot of these groups are being funded by associations like the mm -hmm. NRA or other just private people that want to to influence the direction so they can make more money. Mm. Can I say so, something kind of controversial real quick mm -hmm. to your point? Because this episode will air next week or two weeks from now. And so it, we are a little bit behind as far as when we're having this conversation and when it will reach our peeps. But um, yeah, this is the mm -hmm. week that uh, there was a, another school shooting in Nashville. Uh, it's been a couple days post shooting. I, I don't know the exact number, but it's like 130 something. I think 139th school yeah. shooting in 2023 so far. And it is March 29th mm -hmm. today. And as a mom who has kids in school, right? I'm like, well, the odds are that it will likely happen. Like, that's just what, that's the reality that I have to prepare myself for every day. Like, that's the conversation we have to have with our kids. Uh, my daughter's school is making a big deal about them not having their cell phones on their body. Mm. Because it's becoming a problem for teachers and like I understand like, you know, they're battling these kids with, you know, the constant dopamine hits of having their phones available all day long and, you know, the kids can't sit and like retain information and it's making it difficult for the teachers to teach, etc. However, I could give zero fucks. Yeah. Because if there's a school shooting, yep. I need to be able to get a hold of my child. So it's like, well, sorry. Mm -hmm. That's this is the world we live in. You'll you'll have your phone. Yeah. I don't care if they tell you no. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? And I just think it's interesting. And this might sound like a real conspiracy theory ish. But don't you think it's interesting as the TikTok conversation was gaining momentum last week and mm -hmm. people are stepping up and saying these things out loud, just exactly like what you're sharing with us, like digging deep into some of these shadowy parts of the conversation, looking into lobbyists, looking into where, you know, follow the money. Right. Yep. And then all of a sudden we have another shooting. Mm -hmm. One of our main trigger issues that gets us like right back into being divided. Right. Because yep. people don't want to have this conversation about taking away our guns and our second amendment rights. And, you know, and then to boot, it's a, it's a person who's identified as trans mm -hmm. at a Christian private school. Come on. Mm -hmm. come on just when we're all starting to get along sounds yeah. a little wacky to me that would mean and that would be me implying that our government would kill innocent people on purpose for their cause hit the crickets jesse i'm an elder millennial i've seen 
loose change, bitch. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're is. not gonna go all the way there, but I hear what you're what you're what you're saying. Well, and I just keep think I just keep kind of observing because I can't be as loud as I used to f- to protect my own peace, mm-hmm. but. I keep really seeing that like the more commotion whoever can cause, the more we stay like hyper-focused on these little issues. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And not these larger issues like with our own systems and structures that are in place and people in power. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, do not look at the man behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. Do not start to hold us accountable as your elected officials who are supposed to represent you. Hurry. Look over here at who we're trying to tell you your enemy is. And I think people are fucking over it. I do not think people are buying it anymore. I think that the momentum has already happened. Mm -hmm. I think that, I mean, of course, like not one person wants not one more child to go to school and not be safe. Mm -hmm. Like it's just like we've just reached the capacity of yeah. this like being allowed to happen. But if you look around the world, right, at the things we're not seeing on our news, it's not just here. Yeah. Right? People are uniting like across borders, across heritages, across, yeah. you know, party lines, all the things and mm-hmm. like joining forces. And so it's kind of interesting because it's like our focus is what they're at war over. Right. And if you think of you like, let that trickle down. (laughs) Someday I'm going to write a very powerful book about trickle down leadership, guys. (laughs) It's going to be very impassioned. Two people will buy it. (laughs) But if you look at it like um, it's kind of exciting, but it all comes back down to what we talked about last week. Mm-hmm. And how it really does, like at the end of the day, right? Like there's, it, you can feel so overwhelmed and, and really be like, there's nothing I can do. What can I do? You know, like I just have to, like, I still have to pay my bills. I still have to ugh, do all the things. Like, what can we do? But the truth is, is that like, if you take these things inward, right? Mm-hmm. And you do what you need to do for like your heart, your person, your person, you right take like you said taking care of you so that you can show up and speak calmly and in a way that affects change like around you then if we're all doing that as cheesy as it sounds that's, that's like the candles lighting each other like mm-hmm. across the world and that is like that gives me drum roll faith <laughs> what a- I don't know. But one of the things I learned when I first began my Reiki certification was that there is like a spectrum on earth, right? Like everything is about polarity, light and dark, hot, cold, black, white, Mm -hmm. and really everything like within an energetic space runs on a spectrum from either love or fear. And it's like we get to decide where on that spectrum we're moving at all times with every decision and every reaction and where we choose to put our focus. And I have been guilty so much, even on this podcast, (laughs) of like exposing where I am on that spectrum. Like when I am fired up and like in fear of things and in, you know, upset and those feelings that feel ick. I'm usually like moving in the direction of fear Mm -hmm. or and working out of that place. And when I feel lighter and hopeful and you like focus on the things that like, you know, shine in the darkness, not to sound cheesy, but like you move more towards love on the spectrum. And I guess that's what free will is, right? Is the choice of where you move on that spectrum every day. Mm -hmm. And it's hard because the practice is in trying to seek out and move towards love in all things. And the only, this is sounds awful because this shouldn't be how they get there. But the only thing that kind of gave me hope this week is because I saw a few stories of now, because Columbine was 20 years ago. So now multiple people have children have lived through multiple 
mass and oh school shootings. Gosh. They've been present for several now, not one, but more than one. And I was like, man, I can't wait for these kids to get into office. Absolutely. I, I feel horrible that they have to have so much violence and trauma and mm -hmm. carry it with them forever. Mm -hmm. But if we're looking at that spectrum, that's where we just got to hold out and wait. Like some of the, I think there was the first millennial mm -hmm. elected this year. I can't remember how old he is, but very calm and well-spoken. And he's coming out of this generation. Like he's lived through it. And so that's my only hope is that they get in there and fuck shit up, change it. We like, cause we don't have a lot of power right now, but it's building with every, with every tragedy, like it's growing. Well, and isn't that, isn't that the caveat, right? It's like, yeah. and I, and I really don't, I don't want to come across because people say trite shit. Like yeah. at the most inappropriate times sometimes and it like falls flat and it's like, I don't want to sound like that guy. It's like, you know, when something bad happens, you have the guy that comes in and is like, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. And the you're just like, fuck positivity. off. Like, just <laughs> yeah. let me. Right. I'm not trying to do that. But I will say that, like, you can't help but see in the darkest of, you know, circumstances like the human spirit of resilience finding a fucking way somehow. Mm -hmm. And even on my most pessimistic day, when I have like, when I'm shaking my Lieutenant Dan fists at the sky, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you still, you, it's still there more powerful than the fear, right? Is you see, like you're talking about these brave young people stepping forward. How about the women and young women in Iran? Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it is happening, dude. Mm -hmm. And it is something Everywhere. to be excited about because that is like a spark that can't be put out. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it's really not just about this, t this like app that we love. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It is, but yeah. it isn't. It's about like we had, we were actually given a tool that humanity had never seen, like people sharing all of this knowledge and like important things with each other. Like I have learned more about cultures that I would never, ever have the opportunity to get close to mm -hmm. through TikTok, you know, through not being hindered by what I'm seeing because it's being spoon fed to me by somebody over at the meta corporate office based on my, you know, my <laughs> ad and my search history. Like I've actually been able to connect with like th different therapists, doctors, people of indigenous cultures, other races, like other genders helping me understand things I didn't understand before. Like it is about connection. So I'm setting you up because you recently read a book that talked almost exclusively about this, about the human magic mm -hmm. of, of being a human being. And I, and I want you to share that with us. It, no it's, pressure. <laughs> so I fin um so I didn't know, by the way, little tip, because you know I love getting things for free. <laughs> <laughs> but um the Kindle app, I don't have a Kindle, I just have the app on my phone. If you have an Amazon account, speaking of Amazon, Damn um it. <laughs> Damn it, Amazon. There um there are a ton of free books on there. And I had finished a book and I was traveling and I was like, man, I just need something. So I was scrolling through and I found came across a book called Sapien. Ooh. And it what's strange is even though it was the history of human evolution in a very like palatable way, it it reminded me similar of like this these couple moments I have when I took the trauma informed weightlifting workshop, it's a certification now, but a few moments where human behavior finally made sense to me. Oh, I ooh, was like, share. Oh, so like now when I see that behavior out in the world, I know what it actually means. And sapien was very similar because a lot of it talked about that, like evolution wise, we weren't really meant to manage successfully in a healthy way, communities or groups larger than maybe 150 people. Outside of that, wow. they, um, the groups would 
dissolve and fight <gasps> and do all the things that humans now do because there wasn't intimacy and connection. They didn't know, they couldn't connect with that many people. So I had this moment where I was like, oh my God, like <laughs> it was chill back then. <laughs> We were all just chilling around the fire back then because humans hadn't like grown across mm -hmm. the scale. Well, and we've talked about that, how social can be, you know, our gift and our curse, right? Because we can sprawl out and connect and learn and all the things that, you know, we know are good. But at mm -hmm. the same time, we are left to be held accountable to every person we've ever known. Yes. And not like allow ourselves the like natural evolution of like growing out of a season of our lives where we like just never see those people again. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not meant to still see like my old boss from my first job when I was 14 <laughs> and have them like have an opinion on the choices I'm making now as a 41 year old you know what I mean <laughs> like that's not normal not supposed to happen that way however mm -hmm. that's the world we live in yeah yeah so we had like these you know pods of like 100 150 humans I don't remember the right word we weren't quite human quite yet but we were getting close <laughs> we were trying our we had best. some gills we had some, that's going on. And also, we had some, um, squir some squirrels flying at us. <laughs> I wonder if we were feeding birds, maybe. I wonder if we had discovered cayenne pepper. <laughs> but it talks about, like, within those, like, groups, those pods of people, we all, like, someone would have a kid, but that old adage of, like, it takes a community, like, that's actually where came from we all had intimacy with each other like it was, it was just very interesting and when we got outside of that everything went to hell <laughs> which is still true yeah. <laughs> today yeah. and it wasn't till we came along and learned a big evolution a huge step forward in our evolution was our ability to tell stories because we're the only creatures on the planet that can essentially lie or tell you something that isn't true to get you to believe something to take action so i Dude, know whoa wait 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 a minute because i always kind of trip out on this a little bit but i don't know that i've ever <laughs> welcome to high thoughts <laughs> <laughs> you guys ever wanted to know how rachel and i talk when we're like laying in a bed somewhere at 2 a.m <laughs> this is it because i'm about to get weird Mm -hmm. I always have this thought and I don't really know how to articulate it the way that I feel it like in my body. So bear with me. Okay. But you just talked about storytelling as a human and that's a, I'm a, you know, want to be a writer. You know, this is like something that we talk about a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're all experiencing our story and we're all drawn to story. That's why we are drawn to song lyrics and movies and like all forms of entertainment really s kind of evolve around storytelling like there's a beginning middle end there is a you know uh a plot there is a setting there is a you know some kind of what what's the word protagonist you know mm -hmm. that comes in and then there's always a resolution like that is just like what we do in all these various forms and so if i just as one person right experiencing this lifetime of Mandy Holden on earth at this time. And I have all these stories that, I mean, most of like I've shared some of my, my important stories with you guys, you know, like we talk about our most important ones, but I have stories upon stories upon stories that no one will even know that mm -hmm. exist supernaturally in my brain somehow. And if you think about like the tapestry of how my stories are connected with yours and you multiply that by all of us having our own stories intertwined with other people's stories and how many billions of people are on the planet. Think about what that means, the richness of people's lives mm -hmm. and how silly it is that we just see people like walking by us and not like consider like all the story and life that they've lived in. I mean, it's wild when you really think about it. Yeah. And also what, if we're creating our own stories, like what are we even, what's even real then? Because like, it's only the story that we've told ourselves and passed down. That's, that's how government came about and religion. It was people's abilities. So they talked about like, well, we'll use birds as an example. Like a bird can say to another bird, like food, there's food there, but it can't say, Hey, there's a monster by that food. So if you go by it, 
it's going to eat you. So then they get all the food. (laughs) Oh, right. Like there's no manipulation. There's no, there's none of that. But that's interesting. And so the, some of the first humans got really good at telling stories real and not in order to create these systems and structures for people to live by that we're still fucking doing <laughs> so cool so <laughs> so you're saying we're all screwed per you damn <laughs> but i highly recommend this book i should have brought um i kind of like i like to take notes i don't know why because it was a very like no it's it's uh, no you literally just blew my mind because here i'm gonna i'm going to as a coach then Right. Like if we like like we love this platform because we get to talk about our two favorite things at all times, which are, first of all, running our mouths and acting like idiots together, but also (laughs) wellness, fitness and like the search for whatever that means in the realm of like trying to be your best self. Right. So like we talk a lot about wellness, spiritual, physical, mental and now social. Right. So like how important to someone's wellness journey is human connection, right? Like we know it's like on the tier of the, uh, what it, what is that? The hierarchy of needs? Maslow? Oh my God, yes. please edit that out if I'm wrong. <laughs> Jesse, come on. We'll verify. Verify it for me. <laughs> Ask Jeeves. <laughs> well, and I had wrote down to like trying to imagine how difficult it would be or have been to create states, churches, legal systems. Um, Even like our, the way our highways are, are yeah. you, you know, like driving. If we, could, if we could only speak about things that really exist, a river, a tree, a lion, like if that was the extent of our language and ability to storytell, our whole world would look completely different. I don't even know if we would have made it. That's far. That's so wild to think about. So as, so as a coach though, do you think that connection with other human beings makes a difference in someone's wellness journey? Oh, a hundred percent community. I am convinced community is the secret sauce that nobody ever thinks about Mm -hmm. until it's finally present. Mm Mm-hmm. And part of that is like connection within the community, our ability to tell each other our stories mm-hmm. is so important to be, our, to even tell ourselves our own story, speak it out loud. Well, that goes uh, back to when we sh- talked a couple weeks ago, when we first actually started this season, right? We were talking about making the art because mm-hmm. you, because it's like meant to just be expressed and yes. witnessed, right? And we have this like need to express what we're experiencing and be seen. I want to read you a quote that I found. It says, human connection is the most vital aspect of our existence. Without the sweet touch of another being, we are lonely stars in an empty space waiting to shine gloriously. Mm -hmm. And I just thought to myself, huh. (laughs) It's, It's interesting because I think in a way that people weren't expecting. Like if I think about what Instagram was like in 2017, 2018, right. When I was still somebody, right. (laughs) Like, and you really think about what Instagram was at that time and like what our culture was at that time. And I'm not trying to like beat up on the Kardashians. Right. But they're just like the perfect, like sort of celebrity American thing to like point out at our culture, right? They kind of reigned supreme during that time. And mm-hmm. like that aesthetic and, and kind of the, the flex, you know, a certain lifestyle or a certain like achievement. Right. And you, you know, the birth of influencer culture and people really like abandoning like career quote unquote to like go make themselves someone online and become an influencer and let that be their job right like that's really when that started picking up momentum Mm -hmm. right and so we never saw tiktok coming dude (laughs) because i really believe that tiktok sort of like took the wind out of the sails of like that influencer elite culture where we were still looking at money aesthetic possessions 
material things as like the benchmarks of like what it meant to like have arrived. Mm -hmm. And I believe that TikTok took that magic quote unquote and put it in the hands of regular people. Let regular people shine. Yeah. Well, and now there's, there's all sorts of, uh, not in the U S but I saw in France and some other countries starting to like put their foot down on influencers or like the idea of selling something. So like if you're selling a strength training program and you edit your pictures to make your waist look more snatched (gasps) and they find out like they can sue you and take away your platform and anything else. Like, so it's so strange, like where we came from and where we are Like literally considering putting legal action against these false whatever it's personas it's pretty wild it's mm-hmm. pretty darn wild mm-hmm. so what would you say to our spill your guts community out there as they are probably feeling the same way we are this week how how are you finding your calm in the midst of all this and can you share with um, us well you know i have my go-to strategies <laughs> To stay calm, movement, of course, is at the top, right? So, like, when I feel it coming, when I feel it, like, rising, you know, everyone knows that feeling is, like, kind of usually, like, starts in your guts and kind of, like, hits your heart and, like, you Mm -hmm. have a visceral reaction. Mm -hmm. I start, I'm like, I got to move. I got to go for a walk. I got to go to the gym. I got to do some stretching. And then I usually have to, like, okay, learn as much as I can and really try hard to, like, learn all sides yeah because we talked about being loud and wrong last yes, week. yes yes thank you for saying that yes so hear lots of different perspectives and then decide how you feel about it mm-hmm. and then go back and figure out how action feels right to you because sometimes the action is nothing right now Right. Maybe this is just like a learning phase mm-hmm. um, or a processing or grieving like this is this shit hurts, you know, like this is hard to bear witness to. Absolutely. Thank you for saying that. I feel mm-hmm. that's very. Yes. Thank you for saying that, because I feel like it's like we've all kind of known and alluded to these things. Right. Like, oh, it's not like our country is really being run by corporations. Right. Like. Mm -hmm. And then when you like actually see it, it really is a grieving of what we all kind of grew up thinking was one thing and it's Mm -hmm. actually another. And that's, and that is really sad to think about, but that's also the very thing that's going to ignite these young people Mm -hmm. to, to do something else. So they reject it. Yeah. They're not, they're not about it. Mm -mm. So that's why I have some faith. Mm -hmm. Um, But really like get connected and grounded, Um, check in with people. Maybe there's something you can do that you haven't even thought of that, guess what, when we get together and connect and build communities, like Mm -hmm. maybe there's something new that we haven't thought of yet. Yes. But it's gonna take a whole lot of people trying. (laughs) Exactly, which is why we kind of wanted to talk about it on our platform, even though our platform is so little. I'm not really concerned that the government's gonna flag us down, (laughs) take us down. They'll come right right in after Janet Jackson. If it happens, we're doing just fine. Hell yeah. (laughs) But, but I think it's important, you know, in whatever platform you have in your life, like we have this little, you know, fucking podcast. That's our little, you know, thing, but like whatever platform you have in your life, like we all have a place to shine, Mm -hmm. right? We all have a place to like, kind of stand up and say something in the moments that it matters Mm -hmm. you know what I mean and it's not small it's not small and it's it and and I know it's like it sounds kind of cheesy because it's really not about like saving an app right right it's about salvaging this um human connectedness that we were starting to feel Mm -hmm. and not letting that be ripped away from us again you know because I know too many people now who want to hang on to this and aren't interested in being divided again. Right. I know a lot of people who've actually had their minds changed about some things, including me. 
and want to lean more into that. And it's possible, but we have to like keep the momentum going. And so it means like talking about it and not avoiding it. I think that, you know, sometimes you don't want to, I don't know about you, but I feel like what is, there's so many people talking online, offering their opinions. Like, I don't want to just be like another person that's like oh, this is what i feel about what's going on because <laughs> yeah. it's like actually who cares there's some random lady in reno <laughs> do you know what i mean but it might if you're especially if you're moving on in the spectrum of love and you're moving into that and you're looking for hope and you're looking for something to believe in and you're looking for those like glorious human moments of resilience in the middle of burning ash right it is there if you look and sometimes we need to remind each other of that because it can get overwhelming so so thank you for being willing to talk about that and i want to encourage all of our listeners like as we always do at the end of every episode, like we want to hear from you guys. Like if you are affected, like are you a content creator who's being affected by this? We want to hear from you. Has social media influenced you in your life in a positive way that like people need to hear about? We want to hear from you. Join the conversation. Spill your guts. That's what this is all about. <laughs>